All right. The first song we're gonna sing. I actually, I actually find myself singing this song at least singing it in my mind because I realize as we grow older, we don't really know anything. It takes God to open up our eyes to see things the way we ought to see them. All right. I sing the song. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Oh 
but we hope the Spirit translated for us because those words are not enough to describe God. And we know that we got to know God only because Jesus Christ shines upon us. Let's exalt Jesus. Let's sing this song, Shine, Jesus, Shine. Arabic brothers, 
Al kanishtu masa al kir. To my German brother Mark, I hope this is correct. Guten Tag Kirsch. We have a lot of Hindis. So, Subdu Pahir Church. I don't know if it's correct. We have Oh, I have also Malayalam, because Hindi and Malayalam are different. We have French brothers and sisters. Bona Premidi. For our Spanish-speaking uh, brothers and sisters, Buenas tardes, Iglesia. For Malayalam, Good afternoon, Pali. <laughs> and to our South African brothers who speak Africa, I hope this is correct. Gooey me dog Kirk. Mike, it's okay, Mike? <laughs> okay. So that's the advantage of being in the International Church of Christ. You're always welcome to any language. There's no language barriers. And there is always a person that you can talk to. You know, all parts of the Emirates, maybe. It's our job. Would that be... Uh, al -Ain, you know, we are all gathered here for only one thing, to party or to celebrate. You know, sometimes we feel that, you know, it's a burden coming to church on Sunday. Again, Sunday, I would rather sleep because I have a tiring work, correct? But we are, but when we're invited to a banquet or a party two hours before, am I close ready? Am I Okay. But when we are with God, especially on this time, that we are given the opportunity to be with Him in celebration, Amen. we come late. So next time, be on time. You know, brothers and sisters, it's always a privilege to welcome all the brothers and sisters from all over the world coming to Dubai. We have a couple of brothers and sisters from South Africa, Raj and Angie. I don't know if Jacob gave me the right word for this brother from India. Uh, let's welcome a uh, brother from Bombay Church, Sayash. Sayash. And to start off our, uh, our uh, opening uh, message, I would like my wife to share our opening scripture. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters, friends, family. Uh, for our welcoming scriptures, uh, let's uh, open our Bible to Psalm 100, verse 1 to 5. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his peoples. The sheep of his pasture enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Really, uh, truly, what a great reminder and encouragement uh, for us to know that we are our chosen uh, children of God. And what great source of joy and overflowing of thankfulness, gratefulness, that he who made us will allow us to continue the journey with one and only our God. Let us reflect and continue our focus with him who give us the strength to do his will for his purpose in his kingdom. To God be the glory. Amen, Amen sis. <laughs> we have a great lineup today. Uh, John and Alice Lantano will uh, bring us in the foot of the, uh, the cross. Babu Basam will give us the message for today, and then uh, Srikant will do the reply and the announcement. Brothers and sisters, I truly encourage one another right now to open their hearts, open their mind, forget what happened throughout the week, whatever happened to you on the taxi, on the metro, or whatever uh, bumps that you have right now. Uh, let's have this time of focus for Jesus, our provider and our Savior. Let's go to God in prayer. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time. We thank you, Lord, for this giving us this opportunity to be here, all of you, the brothers and sisters all over the world, to celebrate you, Father God. We just want to thank you, and we want to raise you up in all the things that we're going to do today. Be with the brothers who will preach in the front, Father God, that you will guide them and use them powerfully, not by their own experience, but the power of the Holy Spirit to deliver your word. We love you, Lord. In name I pray. Amen. Okay, we're going to sing a song that reminds us that uh, God is a personal God. He listens to us personally, individually. We come to the garden alone to listen to Him.
me and my household. Let me start my sharing by describing to you the Ark of the Covenant. I want you to visualize it. Okay. What is the Ark of the Covenant? It is also known as the Ark of the Testimony or the Ark of God, a legendary artifact believed to be the most sacred relic, article of religion of the Israelites, which is described as a wooden chest covered in pure gold with an elaborately designed lid called the mercy seat. The ark was designed to be a symbol of the presence of, the, of God in the midst of his people in the Old Testament. Basically, in the Old Testament, wherever the ark of the Lord resides, that's a place where Israelites will worship, worship because God is residing on the ark. It caught my attention while I study in the ark in the book of 2 Samuel. I have two descriptions of this ark of the covenant. Based on the following scriptures that I will read, I will tell you what we did. In 2 Samuel 6, verse 7, when they came to the threshing floor of Nakul, Uzzah reached out and took hold of the ark of God because the oxen stumbled. The Lord's anger burned against Uzzah because of his irreverent act. Therefore, God struck him down, and he died there beside in the ark of God. Reading this scripture, I felt scared and afraid of the ark of the covenant. The second scriptures in 2 Samuel 6 verse 11, the ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom, the Jittite, for three months. And the Lord blessed him in his entire household. Now King David was told, The Lord has blessed the household, household of Obed-Edom and everything he has because of the ark of, the, of God. And I was encouraged by this story. I have shown you two events in this story. The first, because of the disrespect, disrespectful action of Uzzah, he perished. The second, Obed-Edom household, where the ark of the Lord was placed, they are blessed. Why I'm telling you the story? Because I want you to visualize the power of the ark of the Lord and the events. In 2008, we were entrusted to take care of the budget or funds of Sharjah Ministry. I took it because I felt trust, I felt the trust. Until the time my family had a financial crisis that I took to our leader that I don't want to handle the budget anymore because the temptation is great. Instead of taking the money, the leader still challenged me to continue the hand, the hand, to handle the budget because this is what they believe in me. I was humbled and scared too from their trust Though I, got, I believe God wants me to, to teach something, I come to God and pray about it until I encountered in my quiet time the book of 2 Samuel up about the Ark of the Lord. So when you see, after doing the quiet time of the 2 Samuel, the one that I have told you the, the story before, earlier, I learned and considered that being entrusted to be to be the financial representative or caretaker of the budget of the group, as she called it, I raised my view on that obligation that I and my household are entrusted to continue keeping the financial budget of the ministry as if we have given a task to keep the ark of the Lord. Through the conviction from the Bible and prayers, out of fear and temptation, it become a joy to carry the task. I believe that we are blessed in many ways, not on wealth, but over overcoming family trials, striving to change in each characters in the household are a blessing because there is an art of the Lord residing the household. It was always a choice to be perish or to be blessed. It was God who helped me clearly understand not to be tempted 
touch, disrespect the church, money in any ways because I know it was belong to God. I learned here that as a believer, a member of the church, or a disciple, if we are given an obligation for the advancement or the growth of the church, though you have the capability, Isaiah 41 verse 13 says, God wants us to depend on Him. As long as we put our faith in Him, He will undoubtedly guide us. No matter how challenging the circumstance appears to be, Jesus provides us the strength to face every fear and show us to assist us. Temptation is in everywhere. It's hard to overcome temptation, but with God, we will overcome. The Lord taught his disciples in Matthew 6, 13, Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For 15 years, we have been taking care of the fans, the one we consider act of the Lord, that I have learned how to fear God more than anything else, and to avoid the temptation. We are now no longer handling the finances, but God defend my, under defend my understanding so that no matter where He takes us, I know that through God's grace, help, and mercy, He is there to watch over us. And for that, I thank you for listening and to God all the glory. Thank you, Ariki. Thank you, um, Truly, uh, her testimony is, uh, I am also a witness because, you know, sometimes I am the cause of the temptation. You know, some, some, sometimes I, I need, I'm guilty of this because uh, sometimes when we need uh, some financial money, Although we have some money in the bank before, and uh, I will ask her to, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, we need some urgent money, and then I will ask uh, my wife, uh, can you get some money from the church? And you know what I like from her? She stand up, and she said, this is not our money. You, you, you should not touch this. And then, Really, I'm, I'm really uh, um, ashamed to, to accept this. Really, it's, a, it's not a good. It's the church money. It should not be touched. And um, I'm proud of her. Um, let's open our... Uh, can we go to, to Dr. Nino? Let's... As we partake uh, in the communion, we need to examine ourselves, brothers and sisters. Let's open our Bible and read the scriptures in 1 Corinthians 1, 23, 27. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was prayed took bread, and when he, give, he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after the sup supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim that the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread and drink the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be a guilty of concerning the body, the blood of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, communion is a sacred time for you as a follower of Jesus. 
before you participate in this memorable occasion. Take time to spend some time to reflect a moment of self-examination. What does it mean? This has individual matters between you and God. And you, in humility, you have to examine yourself mainly, your heart, anything that is not pleasing to God. Any secret, pride should be revealed. Any unconfessed sin, and forgiveness that may hinder the relationship between you with God. Why I'm saying this? Because if you partake without uh, recognizing or examining yourself, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 11, 28-29, It says here, a man ought to examine himself before he eats the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord, eat and drinks judgment on himself. That's all. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I bow before you in humility and ask you to examine our hearts today. Show us anything that is not pleasing to you. Reveal our any secret pride, any unconfessed sin, any rebellion, any, any unforgiveness that may hinder my relationship with you. As we take the bread representing your life that is broken for us, as we remember and celebrate your faithfulness to me, and to all who receive you. You took that pain to us. You died for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the sacrifice that you, your death, gave life, abundant life, now eternal life forever. I instructed your disciple, I too, receive this bread in remembrance of you. And in the same way, as we take this cup representing your blood poured out to the cross, I realize that you were supreme sacrifice for all my sins. From my past, in my present, and in my future. Because your blood shed for me, your body broken for me. I can be free from the power of, and penalty of sin. Thank you for your victory over death. You took the death that I deserve. You took the punishment. And today, remember and celebrate the precious gift of life. You give me through the blood that you spill. Each time I take the communion, Lord, I want to recommit my life, my heart, my thought, and my everything to you. Fill us today with your power and spirit. We love you, Lord, in your precious name. Amen.
church, let's stand up and sing one song before we hear the song and preach the message this morning. Glory, glory, hallelujah.
Yeah. And always because we have a vineyard in our house, and we do this every year, every year. Then the grape will go a lot, very long, sometimes more than two years, two months. But every time after the rain, the farmer will cut all the extra branches and keep only 50 centimeters where the grape is. See, the grape is always bear fruit in the name and close to the stem. So every time I see this, or when, when I go home, I go there and see. And love to take that only in the end of the branch, you, keep, you see the fruit. Exactly we have our, our wine when we are exactly the same like that. And end of the of the month of the season, we can see the, the vineyard and there is a fire. And everybody knows that he already finished working his farm. And that is a sign. That is really for me it's it's a big thing. To see and read and feel that the Bible is alive even up to now. But in the same time, I like what the teens say. If Jesus came in the time of the internet, <laughs> what he will tell the story? He will say, be close to the router. <laughs> the router is going to have a good signal. You want to be close? So be close to, to the router. And we can see it. In my office, our router in the corridor. So I see everyone will run and be close to it. And how many times we see in the mall or the street somebody will <laughs> looking for a signal to be close to the, to the router. With our life it's the same. With God. If you want to be contact and connect with God, then you need to be very close to Jesus. The signal will be very strong. You will understand him as he understood you. Not only this. In my work, we are doing control publication. Everything computer control. There is no human being in, that, in our conversation. And we have like around 200 thermometers and sensors, and they control themselves. With the flow, with the pressure, with more water, less water, there is no human being there. But sometimes the, the bump stops and we cannot operate it. Left, right, no way. So immediately we call Siemens Germany. Why Siemens? Because they create the system. They manufacture the computer. And they know exactly how to fix it. With our life, exactly. God created us. Amen. And he is only who can fix us if we need fix. Amen. So you want to be fixed. You want to be right because of God. Because he is the creator. Not only this, more important that God have plan for us for future. Plan with eternal life. In our work, we have maximum of three years, four years, five years, guarantee. And after that, you can solve the system. No more guarantee. But with God, it's our guarantee to the end. And we have to appreciate that. That leads us to point number one. Be connected to God through reading the Bible. Reading our Bible is very important. It is through his word that we can get to know God. He already knows us because he created us. But he wants us to know him. And we do that by reading our Bible. This is one habit you definitely want it to have. It will change your life and my life. As we agreed before, books can inform 
but by way can transfer. You want to change your habit, you want to change your behavior, anything, read the Bible. Don't de depend on any other book. Other books will give you information. The Bible in Roman 12 to give us an idea of what it looks like to grow in our relationship with God and how to know him better. Romans 12, 2 says, do not confirm with the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the ruining of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Amen. The Bible here showing that if we live out our life as God's will, He have the power to change our thoughts and our behavior. The key here by reading the Bible to renewal our mind. It is not information. It is transformation. In Psalm 119, 11, the Bible says, I have hid in your word, in my heart, that I might not sin again against you. When you read the Bible, it's word that ha have a power to change our perspective and our behavior. But we have to believe, not just believe. Reading the Bible can help us to know God better and see how much he loves us and want to have a relationship with us. It help us to be closer to him all the time. And it can provide peace and refuge in time of trouble and difficulty and testing. Reading the Bible is like a spiritual anchor for our life. It is important for our life. Psalm 119, 105 say, your word is the lamp for my feet and the light for my path. The Bible is the road map for your life and the light for your path. What we have? It's our GPS, right? We set our life in the GPS and we reach to the right destination. How many times I said, have you the GPS? I know the road. <laughs> Until we reach to the no end road, and they say, okay, let us go from here, somebody we know, some place we know. And it's happened with me many times. Sometimes I, I want to play my and let at all. GBS will tell say, don't worry, I know the road. <laughs> it is exactly. Sometimes we took the matter in our life, in our hands, and we forget our Bible, and we know. The Bible is the road map for your life. But we decide not to. It is a GPS. Let the Bible lead your life. And enjoy the life. Point number two. Be connected to God through prayer. Prayer is one of the most powerful ways to connect to God. It is a source of encouragement for us. With it, we can face any struggle and any difficulty in our life. It helps us to be close to God so we can understand His love for us and line up our will with His will. And I believe this is very important. If you want to enjoy your life in earth, be close to God. Line up 
your life with his life. And you enjoy it. Even how much we, we face difficulty. Even how much we face struggles. But line up your life with, with God. And you will see it's easy because he already overcome even the death and the self. James 4, 8. Say, come near to God and he will come near to you. Just say, I, Lord. Psalm 145, 18. The Lord is near to all who call, call on him. To all who call on him in truth. Are we call him in truth? And that's the secret. It helps us to accept his will for us. Now Jesus himself, he prayed. It is not be my will, but yours. It is not always easy for us to accept what God has planned for us because we cannot see it. Prayer helps us to trust in God and His plans and rely on Him. In other words, it helps us to accept what we cannot see and change. Prayer give us peace that we cannot find anywhere else. Jesus is our example in everything. And we can see that he prayed in many, many situations. We will see some of the situations. Luke 3, 21, at his baptism. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was open, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in a bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, whom I love, with you I am well pleased. In Mark 1, 35. See, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. I need everybody to know at baptism, in the morning, solitary place, this is the key word for our life. Luke 6, 12, praying all night before choosing his disciples. One of these days, Jesus went out to mountainside to pray and he spent night praying to God. When morning comes, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also designated them apostles. In the morning, night, day come, imagine. Luke 11, 1, before he teaching his disciples to Lord's prayer. One day Jesus was praying in the cert certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples certain place, anywhere, in the car, in the job, in the queue. John 6, 11, before feeding the 500. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were sent. And as much as they wanted, he did the same with the fish. And many, many, many places we can see. 
Matthew 19, 13, say he prayed for the little children. John 12, 27, ask Father for glorify, glorify his name. Matthew 26, 26, for the supper. John 27, 1 to 20, he prayed for himself, his disciples, and all believers. Luke 23, right after being nailed in the cross, Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Are we praying for our enemies? Are we praying for the people who have disagreement with? Matthew 26, say, while dying on the cross, Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Luke 24, say he prayed for the bread before resurrection. So if Jesus need praying that much, how much do you think we need to pray? Clearly, we can see that all disciples need to pray. And it is a part of our daily life because without it, it's very difficult to live. In many cases, through prayer, we can find the answers to our questions. Through prayer, we can present our request before God. But we have to pray with faith and give him the full control in our life for action. Now many times we pray and then we do things in our own and takes matter into our own hands. And I think all of us fail in this. We pray and after that we go and try to solve the problem by ourselves. Prayer needs a lot of patience and wait for Lord answer. Having a prayer life that you have a study and healthy pattern of praying to establish relationship with God and stay connected to Him. This is one of the best way to be connected to God. Point number three. Be connected to God through serving. Jesus explained to his disciples that if they want to be great, they must become the least of all. They are to serve not just who love them, but to have, they have to serve everyone regardless of where they are from. This is the kind of humility that Christ displayed through his life, mainly in his service to his disciples as he washed their feet. In John 13, 1 said, it was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil have already promoted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he took up from the meal, the meal took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them into a towel that he wrapped around him. We continue from 12. Then 
he had finished washing their feet, he put on his coat and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so. For that it was I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than the master, nor the messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Amen. Now our story is very simple, direct to the point. No need to use your brain. And not only this, he says, I set you an example. Do this. It's, it's no way, no one have excuse to say, I don't understand, or it is not like this. Or Jacob or uh, Andrew told us to do that. <laughs> it's from the Bible. We have to serve each other. There is no doubt about it. But let us look deeper into the verses so we can understand more for what Jesus wants to tell us. Now, acts of service is what we do while we still have time. We have to understand our life is limited to. I think last week when Jacob shared about the brother, he died in spot an accident, is telling us a lot. There is no time. Our time only with God's hand. Now in verse number one, Jesus knew that the time has come for him to leave this world and to go for Father. He knew his time was up. He had less than 24 hours. He was in the middle of the final meal. These are the last hours for Jesus in the, in the, in the earth. And his focus was how to serve his disciple and how to leave us with a good example of serving. If we knew that this is the last day for us on earth, what we will do? What would the most important things for you to do? Have you ever thought about the last 24 hours in the earth? Take a trip. Go for shopping, clean the house, buy a gift. What would you do? Don't tell me I will become a servant for one day. It will not come to our mind. When I achieve my goals, when the kids are grown, when I take care of my responsibility, you will not, if you keep putting off coming, a servant. There will always be one more very good reason to delay the action. You will get to the end of your life, have done everything you meant to do, except self. If you are not attention, you will never get done. Self is what we do while still have time. Be smart, 
takes his chin and starts sharing. Big thanks to everyone who is here on the chair. With time, with money, with gifts, we cannot appreciate how much they do. Service is how we show our love for those who are in need. Now we see verse number one. The Bible says, having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. So what's love? It's an emotion that God has created in us. But we cannot see it. We can feel it. How can others see our life? Did you think about it? By our action. Only by our action. Gifts, flowers, emotional, talks. <coughs> Another question. How did you know that this is the way to be able to understand love? Through Jesus and all what he has done for us in his life and in the cross. Jesus showed us that we do not love with word only. But we support that love with action of service. This is why we should show each other that we are a family by serving each other. This is also how we stand as a light for the world. If we show them our love with acts of service. Jesus has the power and authority from God that he could have lived life like a king, royal. But he chose to live with the crowds, feeding them, healing them, praying with them, and for them, and serving them. And that's a good example for us. Not only this, he passed on his authority to us, so we can show others how love looks. This power is with us all the time, but it's up to us to show it and make it happen. Jesus is the perfect model for what it means to have all power and authority, and yet choose to use it to stand everyone, regardless of who he is and where from. God had put all things under his feet, so he get up and wash the dirty, the dirty feet of his disciples. The only thing that may prevent us from serving is thinking that people we serve have power over us or better than us, or may take advantage of us. Service may humble us, but this is how we are supposed to be before God. Don't let your emotions or pride prevent you from knowing that Jesus goes through and how he lived his life in earth. Sometimes our pride is a big bumper of self, thinking that people will think down on us. Absolutely. But this is Jesus what he showed. He is the king, he is the Lord of Lords, but he washed 
their feet or hands as well. We really have two choices. Either live our life serving God and others, or make excuse and not to serve at all. This is our choice, and God, God give us that choice. God calls us to serve. That's what God did when he lived in the earth. The real question is, am I going to let God control me? If he is in control, no one can take advantage of you. No one can hurt you. And no one else can control you. Or have power over you. You and I become free to serve others by his power for his glory. He will give us the power. He will free us. And he will give us the freedom. In the end, we can see that we have three points for this. Right. To be connected to God through reading the Bible, be connected to God through prayer, and be connected to God through service. And we have to be smart enough to understand that Let's do it. We still have time. And let us show the people and our family our love because this is what God plan. And to God be the glory. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, church. Thank you very much, Pazam Bro, for your amazing message. Let's give a big round of applause. Those three points are very crisp and clear for all of us, right? Just to be connected to God no matter what and to remain in Him. Yeah? The first, first message is, first uh, point is for us to be connected to Him through reading our Bible. And we fell short of that at times. And that's a great call, great reminder great challenge for each and every one of us. Also, uh, to be connected through the prayer. And uh, finally, uh, through our service. Not just to God, but also to the people around us. You know, that's that's the beauty of uh, Christianity, isn't it? To reaching out, to reach out to the humanity. Uh, no matter the race, you know, we have so many nationalities, like what we have all had uh, announced this morning, you know, still, uh, the call for us is to have that serving heart. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Asam Bro. And uh, thanks, uh, Ata Alice and uh, Priya uh, John, for uh, taking us to the foot of the cross. You know, one good thing that you have reminded us is the heart of the covenant of God. And uh, you know, it just represents uh, the presence of God going with the people of Israelites those days. And, and for us, we have the Bible with us. And for, for you, uh, the testament that we have shared about holding the finances of Sharjah, Sharjah Group. Uh, and we appreciate, you know, we can't uh, appreciate enough for taking that uh, responsibility for so many years from the Sharjah ministry. But, uh, you know, uh, for us uh, to make sure that his presence is always with us, is so important. You know, and and that we, we have, uh, we, we have seen that uh, scriptures while we are taking that communion, which means even in our own temptations, God is still with us. Yeah, he is taking us through. So we need to allow him to work in our lives. Amen, thanks, thanks uh, to Pong and Dr. Celia for uh, opening up. Uh, let's look into the announcements. We'll be back in this hall on June 4th, not the next week. So you have to communicate with your uh, Bible talk leaders for your uh, plan for the Communion House Church. Okay? And it will be uh, June 4th. We'll be meeting here again uh, at 1 p.m. Let's talk a little. We can fellowship. 
we can uh, get connected. By the way, the message is to get connected. Yeah? So let's get connected. And that can happen only when we give hand. Okay? And the singles will have their house church next Sunday at uh, 1 p.m. Uh, in room 307 in, in this same building. Yeah? And if you are visiting with us, please ask the person who invited you to guide you to the midweek meetings. Uh, it happens uh, either Tuesdays or uh, Wednesdays, depending on the place where you are attending. So stay in touch with the person who has invited you. Um, and uh, the juniors and senior preteen parents will have a parenting workshop on 18th of June in 301 Voice Building at uh, 3.30 p.m. So this is for the next month. And we'll be collecting our special contribution in the first week of October this year. So let's uh, keep a tab on that uh, date. Okay. Then uh, about the Kids Kingdom, parents please collect your kids as soon as this worship finishes. So let's do that. I think we are keeping the uh, Kids Kingdom volunteers, the teachers waiting. And let's thank them for the amazing work that they are doing with our kids. Yeah. And then the regular monthly contributions can be handed into your respective finance finance uh, representatives in your final talk. Okay, last but not the least, uh, the amazing couple, uh, one of the amazing couple from, from our group, Sharjah Ministry will be uh, leaving the country. So Ate Alice and uh, Pia John, along with Daryl, let's reach out to them and we can say our good boys. Let's go. Yeah, once the worship service finishes. Yeah, let's go to God in prayer. Father, uh, thank you very much for uh, being with us, for leading our life from the front. We're so grateful and thankful for the way you always lead us. Lord, uh, thank you so much for remind, reminding us uh, on how important it is for us to be connected to you through prayer, through the word of God, through our service, to you and to the humanity. Father, help us to take these uh, points into our heart. Help us uh, to be transformed using the word of God, Father. Lord, we commit ourselves to you. Uh, we thank you very much, Father. We ask all these things in your Son, Jesus Christ, my name. Amen. All right, let's stand up. Let's close out with this song. Let's, uh, I, I think of this as a celebration song, just remembering the gift that God has given us the Holy Spirit inside us, His presence among us. Amen.
situation that troubles my mind.